this is Natasha aka Natty Willie and I am back for my spoiler review of episode three of The Wheel of Time. Uh, episode three is called A Place of Safety and we see the characters split up. We see Nynaeve with Lana Moraine and we see Egwene and Perrin together and then we see Matt and Rand. And so you see where they go and who they interact with. We do get, you know, a flashback or like we find out what happens to Nynaeve, how she got managed to get away from the Trolloc, which was really cool. You know that, you know, Nynaeve, she don't take no stuff. Like, she got lucky. Yes, she did. She got very lucky. But we do, by seeing that, we we, we see how the Trollocs can go off on their own and just do their own thing. Yes, they're being controlled by Fade, but they are known for if they're if they're by themselves and they're not like part of a group <laughs> they'll eat anything they'll like mark anything which reminds me I'm sorry I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to episode one where we saw Lan when he was like doing his tracking he noticed like the 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 dead animals and how they're kind of like shaped like the yang and yang like the the seal the flame the tar belt like you know thing and the yang the black and white circle yeah that that thing. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but I feel like it's called the yin and yang. Uh, but anyways, back to Nynaeve and Lan. <laughs> I'm starting to see a chemistry in just a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, just more Zoe. I'm, I'm super glad we get to see more Zoe or, you know, more Nynaeve. Yay! And she does her little, like, healing thing, even though I feel like yeah there, there's more to that <laughs> but we actually get to see a little more land uh you know a little more like development with land and just you see that bond between him and moraine and how like you know he can feel what she's feeling so i, I am glad that they kind of like established that that's definitely establishing more lore as far as like world building and then with Egwene and perrin um again i want to go back to episode one just briefly because there was a moment where we meet Ran and Tam and they're like going down the mountain and they hear the wolves and then we have Perrin interact with the wolves. The wolves? It's the wolves. Just the wolves. <laughs> and so we see the wolves kind of guiding them to the Tinkers, which what is is Perrin somehow communicating or is he still like just he's still clueless but he's still feeling like some sort of are we are we getting a connection like what what is happening here like that that's still not really clear to me i'm in in the books i'm in parents head so as much as i i need a little more exposition with that but at least they're kind of still hinting that there's something going on with parent and the wolves and him and them like guiding him so you, there's something there and we do get to see uh, the Tinkers. We get Aram and Ilya and uh, Rain. Uh, and they are definitely characters in the books that we kind of get to know. And, you know, they have like a friendship or like, you know, a, a kind of like a, a bond with Rand. Uh, not Rand, I'm sorry, but Perrin. And him and Egwene, they do interact in the books with the Tinkers and they do form that, you know, they have conversations about, you know, their way of life and, and stuff like that. So the meeting them, the way that they're meeting them, it, it does, that's very similar to what happened in the books, which I do appreciate. This episode, I feel like was a little bit more like the books in the sense that how they're split and who they're interacting with. That part was definitely true to the books. We do get those interludes with the characters and you see I do and what I, I always did appreciate was um Perrin and Egwene's friendship and I do see that chemistry between that bond that friendship with them which I am glad that we get to see as well as Matt and Rand and so I do find it interesting that considering what happens with Egwene and Perrin they were together at that moment and what what they branch off into and how you know each of them you know go through that i i do think that that was interesting that they were the ones that got that wind up being together at that moment and going 
who in talking with the tankers and, and being there with them stuff like that and so I did think it was cute that you know Egwene managed to lay the fire a little bit because one thing about Egwene she is ambitious she does want to learn she does want to you know she 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 wants she wants to absorb things and so I am glad that we got to see a little bit of that little spark in her. And at the end of the day, she did wind up helping because they wound up having fire because <laughs> Pam was struggling. <laughs> and I did see a little bit protectiveness of Perrin, but that was already there um, in the books anyway. Like he was just naturally protective of Egwene because they grew up together and everything like that. So again, that friendship, that bond, I, I definitely enjoyed. So we do see Matt, not Matt, yeah, Matt and Ran and we do see them go to a village and they meet Dana, who turns out to be a dark friend. Dark friends do exist. And the fact that this could be just someone that they knew and like she happens to know things that she shouldn't have known. I wasn't sure if that was super believable, but it still worked for the context of the show. I mean, as far as the book readers, they kind of know exactly what's going on because, you know, we, we've read the books. But there was a character, I think, named Dana that was a woman that, you know, wind up you know being killed uh at okay so the thing about tom we finally meet tom Marilyn. like and i thought the song was very appropriate especially like who he was with when he was singing it um definite foreshadow there hey <laughs> foreshadow <laughs> foreshadowing <laughs> tom there's a reason why tom's a favorite and he has definitely established that first thing by killing dana because uh, uh, Random Matt weren't doing it. it, it <laughs> I, I did like, you know, the conversations that Random Matt were having because it was definitely like very similar to what was in Eye of the World. Like it, again, stuff was slightly different because with Tom, he was there like at Emmons Field. So he was traveling with them back from Belltime Night. So the fact that we get to meet him here, it does make sense that if they were going to change it, that that's how they would change it. And we low-key get to see an Ayuman. He's dead, but an Ayuman. And we still get a little bit of lore or kind of like, a, I think that's actually an interesting way of introducing the Ayul, especially since we see something in the trailer, which I'm hoping is a, that's definitely a flashback. And I know a lot of book readers are, was already saying like what that is. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And the fact that Tom kind of like explained, like he wasn't doing nothing because his, his, his mask was off like his mask was down if it was up oh oh you y'all would be dead so i did appreciate that although i it's funny because we do this is different to how we meet in Ayuman in the books they were very much alive when we met them pretty sure pretty sure so the fact that this one was dead yeah okay okay i can i can pro with that but still a very interesting uh very interesting just the way that they did that again kind of focusing on the fact that matt was still poor matt and so i feel like that was an interesting way of establishing like i feel like the daggers are already starting to affect him a little bit but also just his emphasis on the fact that he's poor and that like you know he worries about money and then someone like ships him for his money and but Tom manages to give it back I just and he steals the thing from the I human and Tom being a badass yeah I because <laughs> he is and again just you know this this episode was another like slow burner but it was still good to get that character development between the characters and like how they have that bond with each other and hopefully fans book you know readers and non-readers can see you know that that relationship that they have with each other that the fact that they've known each other for so long and that they're even though they're separated they still like want each other to like you know be around and just like you know that bond that they got because at the end of the day they all grew up in the same village and they're still on this journey together and they're running away from something that they don't understand and they don't they can't it's like scratching the surface in their brain. It's kind of like they've just been buying their business and then all of a sudden they're, they're thrust into this. So I am glad that they kind of like established, you know, what the the downside to that as well as just like as long as they have each other, they're going to be okay or they feel like they're going to be okay. So again, just another like solid performance is from like the cast. And um, again, just gorgeous like shots and stuff of like the mountains and just like 
And um, I do feel like there's like a prevailing theme like as far as the music goes. Like they're using similar music for each episode. I did kind of notice that. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I like the music. I like the music. <laughs> so I do think that at least with Dana, we do see kind of like what her motivation and just the fact that if she is motivated to do this, who else could be motivated to do something for the Dark One? It's like you just don't know who is really for the Dark One or who could be serving the Dark One. It could be anybody. And when you think like that, like how high does that go? So I am looking forward and I feel like that was definitely foreshadowing. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what, what else is going to be happening this season. Uh, episode four looks like it's going to be another good one because we do at the end of the episode catch up with Leandrin and you know Loghain. What's that about? Because that definitely was not in the books. So this episode four is definitely going to be a departure as far as like what happens there but I think that would be something that I'm not going to mind like at all because I feel like that's going to be I feel like that's going to be like something that's going to be super awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think of this episode, my book readers and non-book readers. Let's try not to spoil it too much for my non-readers, but I'm trying to do my best, y'all. I'm trying to do my best. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. I, again, y'all, this is, this is what, just seeing the scenes that I've been reading several times over the years, not recently, but you know, just over in general, over the years, just was like, yeah, I, I remember that. Oh my gosh, Easter egg, Easter egg, Easter egg. Uh, oh yeah, I should say that. Yeah, oh. yeah, guys, just, I am still, I'm enjoying this ride so far. I am definitely enjoying this ride so far. Yeah, again, I'm going to be nitpicking, but I think because I know that, you know, either it can be better or it could just be like, it, it's, I know it's just not what I want. <laughs> Wolfcat12, Team JBS, I'm out. Bye.